welcome to a new episode of New Games for Old Consoles. I'm your host, Ray Commend, and today we're going to take a look at Water Margin, which was originally released in China in the 90s and now has an English release as of fall 2015, courtesy of Pico Interactive. Pico licensed it from NeverEnding Soft, the original developers of the game. With games like Golden Axe, the Streets of Rage series, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist, gamers had a decent amount of arcade-style beat-em-ups to choose from. One game that it never received was Knights of the Round, and if you like that particular game, their water margin may be a game that you may want to check out. It's not exactly the same, but you can't help but spot the similarities between the two. Unlike Knights of the Round, which was based on Arthurian legend, Water Margin is based on the Chinese novel of the same name. This game tells of how a group of three playable outlaws gathers at Mount Liang or Liang Shan Marsh before they are eventually granted amnesty by the government and sent on a campaign to resist foreign invaders and suppress rebel forces. Upon starting the game, you have three characters, Shi or Shai Jin, based on King Arthur, who is balanced, Hu, Sanang, which is based on Ancelot, and happens to be fast and with long range. And finally, there is Lee Kui, who's based on Percival. He is strong, but slow, and of course has short range. The game has seven levels, with 17 stages altogether. Not all stages have the same amount of levels. Some, like level one, only have one stage, while level three has three stages. Like in most beat-em-ups, you walk from left to right, beating up on enemies along the way, while breaking objects to gain power-ups such as food, money, and up to four magic spells. The graphics are really nice and colorful, and the soundtrack sounds phenomenal, technically. Even if it's not your style of music, it sounds great from a technical standpoint. Back to the graphics, Stage 5-1 looks great with animated backgrounds and dithering effects on a waterfall. You also get some day to night transitions in Stage 4-1 and night to day progression in Level 6-3. Even with the great sound, colorful graphics, and animated backgrounds, you'll barely ever see any slowdown or flicker even when tons of things are happening on screen at once. Speaking of tons of things happening at once, you will be bombarded by enemies, especially in the later stages of the game. To help counter this, your moveset includes a normal attack, a jumping attack, a running attack, a special attack that drains energy, and a knock the enemy off screen attack that is done by pressing attack, which is normally your B button, and then towards your enemy a split second after. This is of course in addition to the four magic spells included earlier. And that special attack that I just mentioned is not in the manual, so just keep that in mind. As a side note, every stage includes at least one new enemy, though you will run into the standard color swap enemies with higher life gauges as well. This is a standard in the genre that most people should be accustomed to. I know that it all sounds pretty good, but of course, there are going to be some negatives. I mentioned that the music is technically impressive, however, the voices are not. In the original releases, they were ripped from the Streets of Rage series, and although they were replaced in this release, they just don't sound that great. The level design also has very little variety. Go right, you beat up an enemy, go right some more you beat up another enemy, it's linear and very repetitive. In comparison, Streets of Rage, Turtles, and Golden Axe all have variety to their stages. In terms of gameplay, there are no vehicles or creatures to ride, nor is there any kind of grappling system. And the magic system is not individualized. Whatever magic icon your character happens to pick up is the magic that he or she will have. Some stages also repeat such as stages 4-2 and 7-1, something to keep in mind. It doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. It also has to be mentioned again that sprites are not completely original, nor completely ripped, but heavily inspired from other games such as Night of the Round, Street Fighter, Dog Stalkers, and Streets of Rage. The game also defaults you to grunt, which automatically gives you a bad ending. You need to play at least in a medium difficulty setting known as Tough Guy for a good ending. Hero, which is the hard setting, may also have an additional ending, but I haven't played that level to completion yet, so I can't tell you that. I'm not sure as to why the game was programmed that way though. It should have defaulted to Tough Guy, 
I had a very unpleasant surprise when I was told to play in a higher difficulty setting when I was already five levels into the game. All right guys, so I wanna go over the presentation of water margin because that's kind of an important thing, especially when you're spending 40 to 50 bucks on a brand new Genesis game. So I have it here next to NBA Jam, which is an official release from the 90s, as well as Poppy Commando, which recently came out and it's also an unofficial release similar to Water Margin. Not in gameplay, but just it's an unofficial release. So if you look at the case for all three games, you'll notice, let's put this in front. The label art for all three, it's all printed on pretty much uh, the same type of paper, very high quality photo-ish glossy paper, which is great. It fits, it fits correctly on the, on the case, which is also a plus. And the cases themselves are pretty much made out of the same plastic. I mean, obviously I can't tell you for sure, but, but they feel the same. For the most part, they sound the same. I squeeze them. They're practically the same thing. If you look at the texture, let's see if you can capture it on camera. You tell me they emulate the original which is this one I mean pretty much spot on I mean Pico did a great job at choosing the case you know whoever he got his whoever manufactures his cases definitely does a great job in terms of looking at the back there you saw the front label art looking at the back text is clean get your storyline got your screenshots information there from Pico interactive very nice it's kind of it's missing a barcode though you see that that would have been nice to add to it you know I'm sure if it's an official pro an official product it sure has some kind of barcode but that's just me nitpicking and just to show you something here Poppy Commando has a barcode it just gives it an extra touch of authenticity authenticity very very nicely done when it comes to uh, watermelon games Pico could pick up a couple of things from them but generally did a really good job on the case just very minor little gripes there Could have been a little higher, but it's a minor minor gripes. Case qua case quality is very good. Nice uh, glossy paper, photo paper, very well done on that end. Now, when you look at the manuals, comparing it to an original Genesis manual, pack it the same size. Obviously, it's a lot thinner. And then again, you know, each manual is going to be a different thi amount of uh, thickness. I can tell you right now, just from touching them and holding them, the paper on the original release feels a little thicker, like a higher quality stock of uh, paper. I'll say the same thing about the other unofficial game. Very, very nice paper used on this. Like really thick, almost cardboardish paper. Very, very nice, very nicely done. Very, very well done. Now, one thing is when you look at the original NBA Jam cover and a lot of Genesis games from the past, they use nice paper and everything, but you got black and white manuals, which definitely is a you know, nobody wants that in this day and age. Then again, you barely get manuals at all these days, which is a whole other thing. But Pico did give you a nice color manual. So I guess you can consider that somewhat of a trade-off. Slightly, you know, uh, less quality paper, but still glossy paper and you have color. 
So very well done on that. Uh, they definitely do need a better person or somebody who's a little more familiar with uh, graphic design because this is not very uh, easy to read. So something else to keep in mind, nitpicks, but you have all the basic things that you need. Very nicely done. Alright guys, make sure that okay, that's spelled correctly. Alright. Lastly, we're gonna get to the actual cartridges themselves. So MPA jam, water margin, and poppy commando. So the first thing you're gonna see is the labels fit pretty close to perfect on the original game and on the water margin of unofficial release but when you look at water margin like this is just amateurish really just this really irks me the label does not fit see in the front same thing per perfect fit way too small it makes it look bootleg and perfect fit yet again. In terms of the plastic, these two feel near identical. Very thick, sturdy plastic. This one, still pretty thick. Feels a little bit slightly cheaper, but not, but not so much that you would think that this is gonna break or anything right away. But just a very minor difference but one that should be noted a label really irks me now i did question pico about it in one of the forums on sega 16 and he said this was a mistake from the printer or from whoever he had he had print uh, print out the labels but i mean for the price paid this really should have not have happened definitely wouldn't mind if he sent me a brand new sticker that actually fits Especially being an early adopter. Another thing that kind of bugs me is if you look at these two, they have actual screws and they have their logos imprinted, which is very professional looking on both things and on both carts. Very nicely done, right? When you look at this one, no screws. This is just a mold of a screw no and no uh, company logo or anything here which you know hopefully in future releases he steps up his game and you know makes that you know makes his cart stand out a little bit more a little more professional so sturdy built nice label art cheap casing and bad fitting uh, Ter a, bad, a terribly fitting sticker but other than that I mean, it'll fit on Genesis but just keep that in mind it's, it doesn't look anywhere near as professional as an original game or their competitor uh, Watermelon Studios and their releases which look fantastic and phenomenal in closing Water Margin is in itself a good game I'd even say above average. I had a good time playing it, but it may not be for everyone due to its repetitive nature. Collectors may also be disappointed in the poor presentation and lack of detail on the actual cartridge, as I mentioned earlier. Overall, I'd say to get it on Steam if Pico decides to put it on their storefront or wait for a really good sale if you must have a physical copy. That's it for this episode of New Games for All Consoles. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to check out some of my other stuff on my channel. And of course, I'd appreciate it if you thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Until next time, adios.